please rise. People of God, see the morning is new. Rise from your sleeping and run to the tomb. Come and see, come and see, he is alive. A grave that is empty, a promise fulfilled. God who was with us is here with us still. He is here, he is here, he is alive. Alleluia, love is alive. Conquered the grave and defeated the night. Alleluia, love is alive. The sun has arisen for all. Your people sing alleluia. Alleluia, love is alive, conquered the grave and defeated the night. Alleluia, love is alive, the sun has arisen for all. Your people sing Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, The Lord be with you. It's a joy to be with you here this morning. My name is Father Eric Caden. I've been here a number of times before helping out Father Tom. He has a little town meeting at the other parish this morning, and he was a little, he he realized he couldn't be in two places at once, so I'm here to help. Um, I work in the vocation office here in Boston um, full-time, so I travel around to high schools and parishes and colleges. Um, speaking certainly with all young people, but especially those young men who are thinking maybe, possibly, kind of, I don't know, maybe God is calling them to seminary and to priesthood. And so it's a joy to be with you all. And my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, 
Mosak, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands. <clears throat> they have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. On horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries. They shall come to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites. Thus says the Lord, the word of the Lord. from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. 
He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel today, the words of Jesus, offer us a hard, a challenging teaching. You know, it's nice when Jesus comes to us each week and he, and he says wonderful, uplifting things, when he speaks of his mercy, when he speaks of that passionate and that relentless way that God pursues us, because he does, that relentless and passionate way that he loves us, because he does, because we're his children, when we recognize that his mercy and his love are real, those are easy and those are good and those are wonderful messages. But sometimes, like today, we hear more challenging truths as Jesus speaks not just to his disciples 2,000 years ago, but to us, to me, and to you. I mean, it's a hard teaching when that disciple comes to him and says, Lord, will only a few people be saved Seems like an honest and a, an eternal question that you could ask. And Jesus says, not what we think. Oh yeah, of course, everybody, everyone will. Instead he says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many will attempt to enter but will not be strong enough. See, that's hard to hear. I suspect because in many ways we've become numb to the truth that Jesus is bringing to us today. We've become inoculated to a kind of church of nice, to the church of nice. You know, how often do we hear, I hear it all the time, certainly at every funeral, how often do we hear or do we say or do we even think, well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a nice person, I, I do good things. No, that's important, that's a good thing. But we say that and we sort of presume that that's all it takes. That that is what saves us. But you know, that sounds a lot like the people in the parable from today's gospel. Those people who Jesus says, knock on the door and say, open the door for us. We ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. But the master of the house says to them, I do not know where you're from. I do not know you. Now that's terrifying to hear, certainly. But Jesus, the truth he's getting to, it's he's directing our attention to something very simple, but powerful and true and eternal. That when we ask and we think of these questions of salvation and eternal life, there is only one answer. And there is only one place to look, and that's the cross. That's why it's the center of not only our churches, but of our life. It's the center of our mass. It's the center of this sacrifice that happens every day and every Sunday. That Jesus invites us not to look towards niceness and good things, which which are good, but to look to the cross as he says, this is the way and the only way that he wins for us. Now, 
Not only gazing upon the cross, but living it out. You know, taking up our own cross daily and following him is hard. You know, each day as we awake, we make that choice each morning. Is today going to be about me? Is today going to be about my, my wants, my desires, my selfish intentions? Or is today going to be about others? Is, am I going to choose to love just myself today? Or am I going to love God and love those people in my life? Am I going to serve just myself? Or am I going to serve God and those people in my life? We all know that. I mean, that's every day. Every day we're renewed in that question, in that taking up of the cross. But you know, it's hard. It's not always easy. Because, I mean, the truth is, all of us, we're all weak. You know, we're all imperfect. There's all sorts of ways that we're all dysfunctional. Because we're all sinners. And that's why he has done it for us. And that's why he says, look at me and look at my cross. Because our first response, our first movement on the road to salvation is not just being nice, but is turning to him and saying, I need you to do everything. We got a hint of that in our prayer that began this Mass, our collect. You know, this recognition of gathering us together and speaking to the Lord our needs. Because what did we pray at the beginning? We said, O God, who cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise. It's an admission of, I can't do it on my own. You need every day to convert my mind and my heart to desire what you desire, to desire even my own good. It sounds foolish, but we don't often desire our own good, really. We don't desire what the Lord wants for us, which is the best. And so we ask and we beg him each day to transform our minds and our hearts, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. And so we say to him, I need you. And the most incredible thing is he always says to us, I am here for you. Because it's not about me and it's not about you, but it's about Jesus and what he did in all eternity for you and for me on the cross. Which is take up our weakness, our infirmity, our sin. So that we can turn to him always. So that on our good days, you know, when when we're having good days, we can look to him on the cross and we can see love and we can receive love in return as we encounter him in the sacrament of the Eucharist. And on the bad days, which we all have, we can look to Jesus on the cross and we can see him on the cross and we can beg for his mercy, which is abundant and real. And we can encounter him on the cross in the sacrament of confession that we can meet Jesus always because he is the one who saves us. No one and nothing else. It's why, as an aside, as part of my work in the vocation office in promoting all vocations that call the sainthood that all of us have, but in a particular way, to those young or even older men who God is calling to the priesthood, that we need priests so that we can meet Jesus in the sacraments, so that his cross can be made present, so that we can be saved, so that we can see and know and embrace that perfect joy that God has for us, because it is only by the cross that we are saved. It is only by the cross that anyone is saved. It's only by the cross that you are saved, and it's only by the cross that I am saved. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As God's children, we turn now to our Father with confidence that He hears and answers our prayers. For our church throughout the world, as we seek to bring more people into the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety and welcome for refugees and all those who seek welcome in our free land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who come to the doors inquiring about life in Christ, that they find their welcome and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry, homeless, unemployed, underemployed, and otherwise at the the peripheries of our society, let them know the kindness of God through us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today's Mass is for Lily and Libby, who we remember in a particular way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray, too, for an increase in vocations, especially to the diocesan priesthood here in Boston from this parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we turn to you this day with gratitude and joy in our hearts that you know us, you long for us, you heal us, and you make us lovers of you. Hear and answer our prayers according to your will and for our good and our salvation through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing our song of preparation in your blue praise and worship books, number 48, We Fall Down. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. (laughs) 
O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious and ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, in the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servant Lillian, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and rests in the sleep of peace. Grant her, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Because I have... 
am found. I am yours. I am loved. I am made pure. I have life. I can breathe. I am healed. I Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, 
the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Now, I presumed there were announcements, but maybe you guys aren't into announcements here at St. Rose. I guess you're not. So take, make sure you take a bulletin. Um, I do have one then. Um, I've been here a number of times, and so I say this every time, and I mean it because I feel like your prayers are effective. Um, if at some point this week, if you could just say one prayer, maybe an Our Father, a Hail Mary, a devotional prayer of your choice, um, asking God for an increase in vocations, uh, certainly all vocations because they're all in desperate straits, um, but in a particular way to the vocation of the diocesan priesthood here in Boston from this parish. Um, you know, at the seminary, which is full, which is a good thing, um, if you ask a number of the seminarians there, most, not all, can remember a time when they were younger when someone, a, a, a grandparent, a parent, a friend, usually a grandparent, had asked them if they'd ever thought about being a priest, um, they all would say at the time they blew it off and said, absolutely not, no way. Um, but they really thought maybe. And so it was a seed that was planted. So don't be afraid to ask those people in your life where you see who maybe are attentive at Mass and things like that. So um, otherwise, have a wonderful, a wonderful day and week. It's going to be warm. So maybe you go to the beach. I don't know. That's where I'm going to go. You guys aren't beach people. Okay. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. And please join in singing our recessional hymn number 638 in your missalette, A Rightful Place. Good to see you again.